Hey everyone, what's going on? So just a quick uh, little warm up exercise uh, I'm going to show you in this lesson here, right? This is just a you know, four or five measure uh, little riff using the chords of D and E minor, right? So chord wise, it's pretty simple, but what it's doing is uh, using that sort of distinctive um, melody line that's kind of coming on the bass notes and it's kind of on the second, third and fourth strings. Uh, this is from the Sierra Farrell song, In Dreams. Check out this video because uh, she plays it with a backup guitarist. It sounds really good. It just reminds me of like that Carter Scratch style of guitar you hear in uh, the old, old, old school country music, right? Where you kind of have the melody line played um, in addition to strumming. So uh, I'm going to share with you how to play it. Basically, I'll walk you through this tab. And, you know, as always, you can get the tab on my website for this if you want to sort of print this out and just put it in your bag of tricks as a little... Uh, exercise to, to work on. Um, another thing I'll say that's a really distinctive part of this exercise as far as technique is you're really going to be, the hardest part about it, I think for sure, is um, stretching your pinky, right, when you're playing a D major chord, right? So I'm going to talk about this a little bit. Um, I'll actually, I'm going to refer you to a lesson I did. Uh, it's lesson 167 on my website, playasongnotes.com. Um, where I talk all about this technique, right? Because it's something that's, it's, it was tricky for me to get over the hill with, and even now, if I'm not warmed up, it doesn't come that easy. But um, check out that lesson if you want to learn that technique. I show you seven tips for, for mastering it, sort of, right, or for getting up to speed with it. I don't want to say you're going to master it because that takes a long time. Uh, let me just talk about um, what I would recommend uh, doing to approach this riff if you want to learn it, right? First is, you know, get comfortable with the D and the E minor chords. And those are pretty standard chords. Nice and easy to switch to, pretty much, right? With the E minor, you can do it with your middle and index finger, or you can do it with your ring and middle finger. Uh, I don't think it really matters. Uh, it's up to you. Um, and then there's your D. So the first thing I would say is learning the strumming that you um, can do if you want with this song. And I'm gonna show you two different things here. Basically, if you take a D chord, and if you were to alternate your bass note, right? All right, go from fourth to fifth, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Get used to that, right? This is the sort of the beginner first step approach. And the E minor would be uh, same strings, fourth to fifth string. Okay, that's the sort of basic strum and the sort of more advanced strum is to do a down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, like this. Right, this is the D and the E minor. So I'm just gonna sort of assume you have uh, these strumming patterns at least, um, you know, written down or, or you understand that if you wanna strum, use one of those two patterns. If you're just getting started, you wanna keep it simple, use the basic strum, take it slow, right? And you're gonna use this strum during the riff I'm gonna show you, right? And if you wanna get more, uh, if you're more advanced, you can do the faster one for the up strum, right? But keep it simple for you. Usually when I play this, um, I'll start with the simple one and then after I get warmed up and I'm feeling good, um, I'll do the faster, the, the, the more advanced strum, but I'll keep it slow. It's, it's not necessarily a fast strum, it's, it's a more full strum because you have up strums. So anyway, that's the strumming. Uh, we're gonna go in between the D and the E minor chords, like I told you. Now let's look at this riff, okay? Um, I'm gonna break this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start off by just teaching you the melody of it and then you can kind of add the strumming later. So the first half is what we're gonna learn first. Um, so we're coming from a D major chord, the open D string is kind of our home base, our root note, right? I kind of ground myself with that before I, I start this. So the first three notes are going from, we're on the third string, and with our index finger should already be there if we're in a D chord, right? And we're going to do the second fret to fourth fret. And then the third note is going to be this middle finger on the uh, third fret of the uh, second string, which is where it is for the D chord, right? So um, this is where the pinky comes in, right? Uh, if you have your hand in the D major chord, you're gonna need to get your pinky to that fourth fret of the third string, right? Those are the first couple notes. And then it's gonna go to the pinky on the fourth string, fourth fret. Okay, so. Then you can sort of end it on an open fourth string. And this can be your sort of, um, your home base, and then do the riff and come back to this one. Just these first few notes, right? Get comfortable just doing that. If you want, you can add a strum or two after doing the riff. 
or this first phrase at least. little first phrase to practice to get used to now after that it's gonna get a little bit easier because then we're just gonna go let me do the whole thing so from this fourth fret with our pinky we're gonna go down to second fret of the fourth string and this is a note in the E minor chord okay second fret fourth string so second fret to fourth fret to second fret to open nice little approachable sequence there And then the remainder of the riff, put your hand in the E minor position here. Okay, do the alternating bass note on those uh, fourth and fifth strings from the E major chord, E minor chord, and then go back to that um, couple note sequence, second fret to fourth fret, to second fret to fourth fret, second fret on the third string, back to fourth fret on the fourth, and second fret on the fourth. And you just play the open fourth. So let me do uh, the whole riff again. I'll take it slow. And uh, I really recommend you just approach this again in two halves. Spend time with the first half because it's a totally different vibe, right? It's the D, your hands in the D shape. You want to get used to that pinky coming in, coming off. Then E minor. So something I'll say here is if you look at the whole riff, for some of it, your hand's gonna be in a D major shape and you're gonna be putting your pinky down, right? Then you're gonna leave that shape and then, uh, uh, and then go back to an E minor shape, same E minor shape, and then leave the E minor shape and bring your, your index finger back to that fourth string. Then you go back to the D major shape, all right? So I wanna make this clear that even though um, the riff kinda of looks like you're in D half the time and E minor half the time, in reality, there's these gaps in there where you sort of leave the chord shape and then you're sort of playing lead just on a few different notes. And that's really important when you're practicing this because um, this is not one of those riffs where you're keeping your hand in the chord shapes the entire time. You technically can do that, but it involves a lot of stretching and barring and agility. I'm not gonna get into that. So I just wanna call that out. It's a nice little feature of this riff. So um, I'm gonna play the riff a few times now and start to bring in the strumming, right? So to start off with a simple down strum, right? That first strum I showed you. So. So we ground ourselves on that D note, okay, and then start the third string. Then lead, strum, strum, then lead, D strum. Start over. And um, I'll talk about the, the D strums here. When you are you have your pinky down in your strumming, right? You wanna keep your pinky down on that strum. What's gonna happen is you might find that your second or first string is muted because of your pinky. That's okay. Um, as long as you're really strumming, it gives it that rhythmic feel. It's almost like your guitar becomes a percussion instrument. So let me do the down up strums now, okay? And I'm gonna do it slow so you kinda hear the, the rhythm part kicking in, right? So. So uh, there we have it a few times. And um, again, I would say, you know, uh, work on that pinky stretch. Watch my lesson number 167 to learn some tips I give you about just how to position your hand, how to sort of practice it. There's um, lots of technique I get into there. Um, you know, take the slow strum first or just focus just on that lead riff first, right? be worth
worth practicing just on its own without the strumming, right? Because you kind of learn the, the melody, you work on memorizing the melody and getting the notes right. Whoop. Right, and then another tip is break it into pieces. Right, just work on this. Um, just spend time with that D, uh, get comfortable with it, and then practice going from the chord, you know, the strummy position to the sort of lead position where you're not in any chord shape, and then transition to the E minor. Lead, back to strumming. So there you have it. I uh, hope this was helpful for you. I just wanted to share this because I've been having fun with this riff and it's a nice little short exercise to work on. It's a good practical application of that pinky stretch technique that I mentioned. So again, check out uh, the website for uh, the PDF for this lesson and also for lesson 167 with those D major pinky stretches and uh, you'll be in good shape. And otherwise, I'm going to get back to practice some, some of my other stuff for upcoming lessons I have going on. So check out the website, playsongnotes.com. Uh, subscribe if you want to keep in, in uh, the loop or better yet, uh, subscribe to my email list because that way you'll find it in your inbox whereas youtube who knows how that works you know sometimes you don't get videos in your feed but anyway thanks you all for watching i uh, really appreciate it and have a good one Bye bye